The reason that you and I are basically sitting here is because of Herbie Whitaker. Yes. Without him. Well, without him, a lot wouldn't have happened. A lot, again, of course, might have <laughs> happened. But, but uh, not with his sort of rather stringent rules of, of behavior and uh, style and things that he dogmatically insisted upon in life and, and on the stage. Uh, without that sort of influence, we might have gone amuck. Did he ever direct you? Uh, yes, at, in restaurants when we were having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once, he, yes, he, once he assisted Pierre Dagenet, a young Montreal genius who died at age 19. Dagenet was a, an extraordinary talent in this country, just some marvelous stuff. And he died rather, he, he used to walk around the streets of Montreal with a scarf flowing and a very, very handsome, he looked like the sort of young Chopin or the young Baudelaire. Or I don't know him, Pierre Dagenet. Yeah, Pierre Dagenet was one of, uh, he, he ran a theater called L'Equipe in Montreal. And uh, you know, I was only 19, and I worked with him in a play that was written by Francois Mauriac called Asmodé. This is 1946, 47? Something yeah, like that, in the pre prehistoric days when <laughs> I was 16. And that was my first sort of job at the MRT, Montreal Rep Theatre. And Herbie helped uh, ease the, the lack of English that Pierre, Pierre didn't speak English, except he swore wonderfully. But, uh, and Herbie helped on that. So he, in, in a sense, he did direct me. But all through one's life, w w you know and we know Herbie as somebody who was our, on our side of the fence. He was a straddler, as he used to call it. Kenneth Tynan later became a straddler for other rather uglier reasons. But uh, Herbie's were, <coughs> were all for the right reasons. And he didn't use it to meet people or to, <laughs> to win friends uh, because he had them already as a critic. He met so many stars that had come over. Now, what made him different as a critic that he could have an address book full of people who worked in the theater, whereas most critics nowadays won't have that? Well, no, I, I think they were <clears throat> so grateful to arrive in Montreal, it was in Montreal days particularly, and, <clears throat> and to find someone who wrote in English for a start was a shock to them, I think. They were, I think they were in French Canada, they were going to have a, and someone who obviously understood the English theater particularly, very, very well. And, <clears throat> and I think he was very encouraging. I think sometimes he was a little mild. Uh, I, I would like to have seen Herbert more peppery in his criticisms, but um, I think he gave them all very good notices. <laughs> and uh, consequently, they, they loved him and they wanted to come back. So he, in, in a sense, encouraged <clears throat> the, the, the guest artist theme in the, which in those days was huge from other countries because we had no theater, we had no professional theater of our own. But he also had a, a kind of gentle stubbornness about theater in Canada that he pushed to, he encouraged all those years. And oh yes, oh yes, there's no one who, who uh, I think no one was as passionate about uh, seeing a Canadian professional theater as was Herbie. Maybe on the French side there, there were some people, but certainly on the English side uh, there was no one like him. Uh, <clears throat> I said in, when Kate Barris read so beautifully the little thing I wrote about Herbie at, at his memorial, but uh, I do say that he was really the only voice that we could really listen to because the others were remote and, and uh, scholastic and rather academic in their approach to the theater. Herbie's was practical. He, he was a part of it. He was a good designer. He was a wonderful director. 